Our gospel lesson this morning, Luke chapter 5, in the first 11 verses, it strikes me as odd. Now, the part that strikes me as odd may not strike you as odd. It may not hit anybody else in the same way. This is a familiar passage. There are versions of it in both Matthew and Mark. However, the other two synoptic gospels leave out the, the weird bits. Matthew and Mark depict Jesus at the beach, and they both show Jesus calling Simon and Andrew and Zebedee's boys, James and John. It's, it's pretty consistent. The, the, the overall message is consistent. But here's the weird part. Luke begins the story when Jesus sees two unattended boats. Long before I ever had my own boat, I was aware of and saw unattended boats. Marinas are full of them. I saw them, and uh, even in the years since, I had my very first boat when I was when I was 18 years old, the little tiny thing that some people might have called a derelict vessel. I wandered the docks, looking at all of the boats sitting in their slips. And if I'm honest, I still do like to walk down a dock and look at each of the boats and imagine how it might sail. The, the odd part of Luke 5 comes in verse 3, because Jesus didn't just notice the two unattended boats. He took one. He sa it says right there. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to push it out a little way from the shore. Now, maybe things were different back then, but today, no matter how enticing a boat looks, it is a serious party foul if you get on the boat, untie the dock lines, and go out for a sail. People in the first century of, in Palestine used a type of boat called a canaret vessel. And they were open wooden boats about 26 feet long, 8 feet wide. They could be sailed or rowed. And they used them for a whole bunch of things. And, and so it always strikes me as just odd whenever I look at this passage that Jesus got into this boat and just took it out a little ways. From this boat, in between verses 3 and 4, he gave a sermon. And this is the second part that jumps out at me. Admittedly, I'm still stuck on Jesus taking the boat without asking. We have to resist the urge to retroject our understanding of the world into the text. And the Bible isn't a literal account of every utterance between Jesus and Simon. And perhaps the part where Jesus asked for permission was just just left out because everybody who heard the story assumed he must have already asked. He wouldn't have taken it without asking, certainly. But at this point, though, now when we get to between verses 3 and 4, I want to know what he said. I want to know what his sermon was about. Was it this sermon that moved Simon and Andrew and James and John to leave their nets in a little while? Now keep in mind, they had been fishing all night. But keep that sermon also in mind. What did Jesus say? What did he share? Did it look like the Sermon on the Mount that we have in Matthew chapter 5 to 7 with the Beatitudes? Did it look like the Sermon on the, the Plain from the Gospel of Luke? But at this point, I'm really wondering what did he talk about? These guys among the crowd that had gathered around, had been fishing all night, and they used these things called trammel nets, which are three nets that hang from a float. And most likely, they had been fishing for tilapia galilea, which is today often called the St. Peter fish. But after dragging their nets all night, in and out of the boat, and catching nothing, they took their tackle ashore to clean and prepare for the next night of fishing. Having been up all night, they would have been exhausted, propping their eyes open while this itinerant rabbi wanders onto the beach, a crowd following and gathering around, and he starts teaching. I can imagine it might have been irritating for them. I don't know how you are when you're tired, 
If you've been up all night working hard, sitting there at the beach trying to just get things put away so that you can go home to sleep for a little bit, and now there's a crowd all around, I can picture Andrew saying, hey, watch the net, would you? Or James might have gotten tired of having to answer one more person and saying, no, I don't have any fish to sell you. We, we didn't catch anything. When Jesus took Simon's boat, he, he knew that sound traveled well over water. And with this crowd gathered around, even standing among and around the trammel nets, Jesus would have known that they'd hear him better if he was speaking out a little ways because sound travels so much better over water and he didn't have a PA system to use or someone in the sound booth to turn him up or down. But throughout the Gospels, we get this sense of Jesus' understanding of his world. He wasn't just showing up to say what he had to say. He was there among them, moving with them. And hints like this suggest that he not only knew his world, his culture, and people, but he knew his way around boats and the water. One archaeological account of this passage suggests that from the boat, Jesus could probably notice behind him, as he looked at the crowd on the shore, a shoal of the tilapia moving around on the surface. This wouldn't have been visible from the shore. So instead of looking like a know-it-all who absconds with boats that don't belong to him, when he says, hey, y'all cast your nets over here, he was making a helpful suggestion based on his understanding of his world and his engagement, not only with the crowd who had come to hear him, but with the fishermen who they had moved in on. Simon heard him and jumped into action because this was not just a recreational fishing day. This was a commercial endeavor. Not only was fishing how he and Andrew and Zebedee's boys made their living, but this livelihood of theirs provided necessary sustenance to the people in their community. When people like him fished, others ate. When they didn't catch anything, they didn't get to buy food. Yelling back and forth, Simon and Andrew pulled in their nets, and they shouted to James and John, get, get out here, the fish have arrived. And so James and John jumped in their boats and shoved off from shore, rowing furiously to get out to this shoal of the tilapia. They took their, shook off their weariness and went into action. They threw their trammel nets over and pulled them back in, as heavy as they were and as weary as they were from having been working all night. And as they pulled them in, these fish swirled around, and they wanted them. They wanted them all. They wanted them all in their boat, but some got away. Both boats entered the informal commercial competition to pull in more fish than the other guy. And then they raced back to shore to sell their catch. The people who had been listening to Jesus and who had begun to wander away after his sermon concluded. They had left with food for a thought, but nothing for dinner. And now, with the commotion that was out on the water, they came hurrying back, and even before the first boat reached the shore, someone cried out, I need four, four tilapia, we're having guests for dinner. Somebody else said, I just need one, give me one, I gotta get home. And after the crowds had purchased their fish and drifted away, the four fishermen, who had been up all night, sat in their weariness and their thoughts. With the words of Jesus' message, that one that we don't get the text of, between verses 3 and 4, the words of his sermon sort of swirling in their head, the, 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 the weariness of a night spent throwing your net, pulling it in, only to find an old boot and no fish. There they sat. Simon was the first to speak, and his words may have been less proclamation and more dog-tired, <coughs> breathless amazement. 
Good Lord, you are the real deal. My gosh. Luke says they were amazed at the catch of fish. I think it was more than that. Jesus was less a thief stealing a boat and more of a participant in their lives. And and there he was with them. And as they fished, Luke also tells us about this miraculous catch of fish that made the boat so full that they started to sink. Well, those four fishermen knew more about the dangers and risks associated with the water coming closer and closer to the gunnels as they loaded more and more fish than any of us could ever imagine. They knew the danger they faced. They were experienced mariners. They all likely knew people who had died at sea. Even a short distance from the shore, trying to fit too many fish into a boat could lead to disaster. And here they were. Back on the beach, alive, having sold their wares, people could now eat. They were still in business. And Peter said, my, my Lord. Exhausted, out of breath. And here was Jesus. His sermon might have included an invitation, a call into a life in communion with God, just like these Galilean fishermen who wanted all of the fish in their boats. God wants everyone. God looks at the swirling mass of humanity, looks at the earth and sees all of us and says, I want you all. I love you all. I want you all to be a part of life in me and casts this divine net with an invitation to abundant life. But even with the joy of nets overflowing, some, some, some people, some fish, always, always get away. When Jesus spoke, and it was just the four of them, they listened but didn't act. They didn't act when they were among the crowd. They didn't step up. They didn't sit there cleaning their nets and say, I want what you're offering. I want this love. I want this abundant life. They continued cleaning their nets. They continued in that task. The people who gathered around and were also listening to that sermon went on their way when it was done. But it was only when they saw him, Jesus, with them, participating in their life, could they see what this invitation really meant. He didn't call them because of their qualifications, because of their character. He didn't have some secret disciple aptitude test that he had done privately ahead of time. He didn't call them because of some reason. God's call is as unpredictable as it is unmerited. He met them right where they were, right where they lived, right where they worked. When Jesus said to them, you know, you guys, you did a fantastic job with these fish. You did a banger job. But now I want you to do something different. I want you to do something richer, deeper, more profound. I want to invite you to go out and share good news to people. They, they understood better what he meant. They had been with him. They had seen him. They had watched him. They were both caught in God's divine net of love, understanding, and embrace. And they realized that now they were perpetuators, sharers, proclaimers of that radical love. On their journey, they could share God's good news, and some people would accept the invitation they offered. Some wouldn't. In fact, they would lose far more than they would ever catch. We all do. We all. We all do. Wherever you are called, whatever you are called to do, cast your net. Lean in to God's calling. Lean in to the divine understanding and rest in the divine assurance that you're going to catch some and some are going to get away. And no matter what, 
God is always with you. Amen.